The system power button is located at the bottom of the right side of the monitor. Once pushed, the system takes less than 30 seconds to boot up. If the system is in standby mode, there will be a moon icon flashing in the bottom right of the screen. The system boots up in five seconds from standby. To adjust the height of the system, depress the handle on the cart and raise or lower. To tilt the screen, push in at the top or bottom of the monitor to angle high or low. To lock the wheels on the cart, press the lever at the top of the wheel. To unlock, lift the same lever on the wheel. The retractable power cable is located beneath the tray on the back of the cart. Pull the cord out to plug in the system and pull the cable to the side to lock the cord in place. To retract the cable, extend it to the full length and the cable will retract on its own. On the bottom rear of the cart, there is a tray which can secure a printer if applicable. Above this, there is a storage location for disinfection solutions. Cleansing wipes can be secured here with a Velcro strap. Above this storage apparatus, there is additional storage for ultrasound gel and cable management features. There are three active transducer ports on the rear of the TE7 monitor. To connect a transducer, flip the tab to the right to unlock. Secure the transducer and push the lever to the left to lock into place. It is recommended that the system be frozen or powered down to connect and disconnect transducers. On the rear of the system, there is a power cord connecting the cart to the monitor on the left above the power button. On the right, there are multiple ports from top to bottom, DVI, HDMI, four USB ports, and an Ethernet connection port. The basic workflow of the TE7 is illustrated by the tabs along the lower left side of the screen. Press the Patient tab to access the Patient Information screen and enter demographics if desired. Tapping any of the fields will pull up a keyboard to manually enter data. The system will assign a generic patient ID that includes a date stamp if no data is entered. If purchased, a barcode scanner can be used to scan a patient's wristband, or a DICOM work list can be queried. If applicable, both of these options will be set up by an applications specialist upon installation of the system. To query a work list, simply tap the work list tab along the bottom of the patient data screen. If this tab is grayed out, it is because you are still in an active exam. Tap work list and query. A list of patients will appear to choose from or input search parameters at the top of the page. Choose the desired patient and press Done when all information has been entered into the demographic page. Next, tap the Probe tab. This is where both transducer and exam mode are selected. Tap on the name of the desired exam mode to begin. Note, tapping on the picture of the transducer will bring up the default preset which is demarcated by a check mark on the list. Return to the probe tab at any time during scanning to change exam modes or transducers or to reset imaging parameters if needed. Now the system is ready to scan. The screen is divided into two basic sections. The top half is the imaging screen and the bottom half is the control panel. More detail will be given on the control panel items later in this series. The information banner along the top of the screen includes the transducer and imaging parameters, patient data, exam, and date and time. Furthest to the right is the menu icon. Located here is the monitor brightness and contrast controls, the screen lock, which allows the screen to be locked for 10 seconds for cleaning purposes, and the trash bin, which is where deleted exams and images are stored. Delete unwanted items manually or the system can be set up to purge them automatically. An application specialist will help configure this feature. The QPath and V-Access functions are also launched from the menu tab. Those items, if applicable, will be reviewed by an application specialist. Next to the menu are icons for battery status, wireless, task management, local area connection, and DVR. 
Returning to the basic workflow tabs, any images or clips taken during the exam may be reviewed with the Review tab. Tap the Report tab to see or edit any measurements taken during the exam. Finally, when you are finished, press End. The iStation tab activates the patient archive. Review, delete, or send past exams from this page. Prior exams may also be reactivated for up to 24 hours in order to add or change data, such as patient demographics, if needed. To do this, highlight the desired exam and tap Options at the bottom of the screen. Available options will be illuminated. To send an exam, highlight the desired exam and tap Send To along the bottom left and choose the destination. This concludes the chapter on basic TE7 workflow. Next, we will review the main imaging controls. On the right side of the TE7 touchscreen is where the gain and depth controls can be found. For gain, up is brighter and down is darker. For depth, up is more superficial and down is deeper. Either slide the control pods or tap above or below them on the line to adjust. The green carrot on the right side of the image is the focal zone. Move the carrot by holding and dragging either up or down. The location of the green carrot is the zone where the image will have the best clarity. On the left side of the touchscreen is the IQ key which is where frequency can be adjusted. There are six frequencies to choose from. There are three fundamental frequencies and three harmonic frequencies. Most of the time, frequency will not need to be changed since the optimal frequency is applied in the exam preset. On the left side of the touch screen is the iTouch key, which is auto gain optimization. Once it is pressed, the key will stay highlighted blue. To turn it off, press and hold the iTouch key. iTouch can be used in both B mode and pulsed wave mode. To scan in full screen mode, use a finger to swipe down from the black border through the middle of the screen or press the full screen button on the touch screen. Notice in full screen mode that adjustments may be made to gain, depth, and color, as well as save images and clips and change transducers. To access other modes, exit full screen display. To exit full screen mode, swipe up from the bottom middle of the screen. The freeze key is located on the lower right side of the touch screen. Use freeze in order to measure, annotate, or print an image. When an image is frozen, there is the ability to cine back to review and save previous frames. To cine through the image, either swipe left on the imaging screen or slide the frame indicator icon under the Cine tab to the left. To save an image, press Freeze and Save Image, or save an image on the fly by simply pressing Save Image without freezing. To save a clip, press Save Clip. The system is set to either take prospective or retrospective clips. If prospective, the display will show seconds counting down, to print an image to the optional onboard printer, press the Print key. The system will need to be plugged in in order to print. Save an image and print later if not plugged in during the scan. An application specialist can configure the optional onboard printer. Major modes are located on the lower right side of the screen. B mode is grayscale imaging mode. Pressing the Image tab, which is located in the lower middle section of the touch screen, will allow access to adjustment options for each mode. To turn on color, tap on the color key on the right side of the touch screen. Notice that the imaging parameters in the middle under the image tab change to color. To change the size of the color box, tap and drag one of the dots in the corner of the color box. To change the position of the box, press a finger in the middle of the box and drag it around the image. Notice, while in color mode, the gain works to increase and decrease your color gain. To exit color mode, either press the color key again or press the B key just above it. 
To enter pulse wave Doppler, press the PW key. Position the PW sample gate in the desired position with a finger. There are three ways to activate Doppler. Press the PW key again, press the update key, which is highlighted blue, or double tap on the PW cursor. Notice while in PW mode, the options under the image tab have changed to PW, which is highlighted in blue. To access M mode, press the M key on the right side of the touchscreen and position the sample line on the image. Enter M mode similar to PW mode. Press the M key again, press the update key, or double tap on the M mode cursor. To exit M mode, press the M key again or the B key. To annotate on the image, press the annotate key, which is located on the bottom of the touchscreen. There is the option of using the preset annotations or manual entry. Tap on a word to highlight it, press delete word to delete one word at a time. To move annotations, press and hold on the words and drag a finger to a desired location on the screen. Tap the keywords again so that they change from yellow to green. To delete all text, either press the delete key or press clear comments. To freehand type, press the keyboard key under the annotation tab. To turn off the keyboard, press the keyboard key. Measurements on the TE7 are divided into two types, basic and advanced. Basic measurements are generic calculations like distance, area, and volume. Under the advanced tab is where the labeled measurements specific to the exam mode are located such as crown rump length in OB or ejection fraction in cardiac. To take a basic distance measurement, freeze the image and press the measure tab in the lower section of the touch screen. A hand-shaped icon will appear on the screen. Place a finger on the icon and drag the caliper to start the measurement. Tap to begin, drag the caliper to the endpoint, and tap again to end. The small arrows around the hand allow for fine adjustments. While using the measurement tool, the Update tab will toggle between calipers to reposition them if needed. Note the caliper is green while active and turns white once it is set. Add multiple sets of calipers if desired. Once all desired images have been stored, select the Review tab. Once in Review, images may be selected for full screen review by double tapping the desired image. To scroll through the images and clips taken, select the arrows on each side of the review screen. To change the number of images viewed from the main screen, select the Grid View button here. Images may also be deleted from this location by selecting the image and choosing Delete at the bottom of the screen. Post-processing features are available, such as adding annotations or measurements during review as well. Once all necessary changes have been made, select Done to exit review mode and return to the main imaging screen. Select End Exam. If the system has been set up to transmit images to a PAX, an application specialist may set up the system to automatically transmit images when selecting End Exam. Select iStation to access the exam archive with a list of all prior exams. Review, delete, or send past exams from this page. The TE7 provides the ability to reactivate an ended exam, to add images, or to update patient demographics. To change patient demographics, tap once to highlight the desired patient. Select the Options button on the bottom of the screen. Available options will be illuminated. Select Activate. This will activate the patient demographics screen. To update, tap on the desired field and an X will appear. Select the X to clear this field. Enter corrected patient information at this time. Select Done to accept changes. To send images to an external archive or storage device, select the desired images and choose Send To at the bottom of the screen. To delete studies from the iStation archive, highlight desired exams, leaving the most recent exam unselected, then select Delete at the bottom of the screen. 
The recycle bin is a tool used to retrieve accidentally deleted studies or images. Select Recycle Bin to view deleted studies. To retrieve a specific study, highlight that study and then click Retrieve. This will send the exam back to the iStation archive. It is recommended that the recycle bin is emptied after deleting studies to keep the hard drive clear. An application specialist may set up the auto-delete feature, if desired, to ensure that the hard drive will never get too full. The L12-3 RCS and L12-3 VNS linear ultrasound transducers allow operational functions to be programmed onto the buttons. There are three button controls, two on the face and one on the side of the transducer, that can be programmed for multiple functions if desired. To program the L12RC transducer, tap the menu icon in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Tap Setup, then along the left, select the tab labeled Probe. Note that on some software versions this may be called POC Probe. This brings up an illustration of the transducer and applicable button keys. Use the drop down arrow next to each button to select the desired function or functions. There is the ability to program a short press, a long press, and on K3 a double click as well. Make desired selections and tap save at the bottom of the screen. Buttons may also be disabled by simply sliding over the toggle labeled Enable Probe Key Functions to the left. Also, as noted on the screen, simultaneously pressing K1 and K2 will disable or enable the buttons during use so that there is no need to return to the setup pages while scanning. iScan Helper is an educational reference tool built into the system which provides tutorials and is exam mode specific. To initiate iScan Helper, select the desired transducer and exam mode, then tap the iScan Helper icon on the touchscreen. Select the target view and the system will display four different informational screens. The system will provide you with an image which portrays proper transducer placement desired ultrasound image, a graphic pictorial, and additional scanning tips. Tap the iScan Helper icon to exit. Please note that images cannot be saved while iScan Helper is active. The iWorks option is MindRay's protocol feature which allows for guided pre-labeled exams. iWorks is exam mode specific, so first choose your transducer and exam mode. To activate, tap the iWorks tab at the bottom center of the imaging screen. A list of iWorks protocols will display to choose from. Tap the applicable protocol from the list. iWorks comes equipped with a large library of factory protocols, but custom iWorks can also be created. An application specialist can help build custom protocols to desired specifications. Once a protocol has begun, the views will be displayed at the bottom of the imaging screen, as well as any associated annotations. Obtain the view and tap Save or Save Clip to store. For views that activate different modes, require measurements, or activate dual, follow the prompts along the bottom of the imaging screen. The system will automatically advance to the next view. Proceed in this manner until the iWorks protocol is completed. iWorks is designed to offer flexibility while scanning. To the right of the views, there are tabs available to repeat, replace, insert, and delete a view. There is also the option to pause the iWorks protocol if needed and resume later. To pause, tap the Suspend tab. To resume, tap the iWorks tab again and the protocol will pick up where you left off. Continue until complete. The Stop tab ends the protocol but does not end the exam. Continue to scan the patient outside of the protocol if necessary. When ready, tap End to close the study.
Choose iNeedle on the left of the monitor. iNeedle is compatible with all linear and curved transducers. This needle visualization software is based on beam steering and only functions for in-plane procedures. The system electronically steers the ultrasound beam towards the perpendicular interface of the needle, thus enhancing the needle appearance. Notice that the degree of insonation automatically adjusts to degree of the needle trajectory. Eye needle controls can be adjusted in the bottom middle image tab. Initiate the L11-3 VNS or L12-3 VNS transducer in preferred exam mode. Press the eSpatial Navi tab on the left of the monitor to activate. Verify the needle being used is from the approved list in the image tab. Press the calibration button with the transducer approximately 12 inches from the system at the same level as the top of the TE7 monitor. Make sure the transducer indicator notch is toward the left of the screen during calibration. The notch correlates to the M on the imaging screen. A message will appear when complete. Recalibration should only need to be performed once each day or if a different needle is chosen from the list. Magnetize the needle by placing it in the magnetizer with the cap on all the way to the bottom for a second and pull back out. Notice the trajectory or dotted line on the screen before touching the patient with the needle. For out-of-plane procedures, change angle and degree of the needle to alter the target box location. Advance the needle toward the target. The top yellow dot is the needle tip. Blue indicates the needle is crossing the ultrasound beam. Light blue is close to the beam, and orange means the needle has fallen out of the ultrasound beam. For in-plane procedures, the colors mean the same. Once the box is blue, the needle is in plane with the ultrasound beam. Light blue means the needle is close to the beam, and orange has fallen out of the beam. Notice the graphic at the bottom left of the image which shows the needle orientation in relation to the ultrasound beam. Auto EF is a quick tool that provides left ventricular ejection fraction based on the Simpsons method. Auto EF can be used either on a saved clip or while live scanning. Using the phased array transducer in a cardiac exam mode, Obtain an apical four or apical two chamber view of the heart and hold the view or have a previously saved clip playing on screen. Press measure, advanced, auto EF. The system will automatically analyze and trace the left ventricular chamber in both diastole and systole, providing ejection fraction and volume data. The placement of the tracing points can be adjusted manually if needed. The system automatically identifies these two views. However, tap on the view label in the upper left if it is misidentified and the system will reanalyze the clip. A progress bar will be displayed along the bottom with results. To adjust the placement of the tracing point, tap on the caliper icon and drag it to the image, and a section of points will turn yellow. Tap to grab the points and drag them to the new position and tap to release. Underneath the image, there are additional control options. Accept results will put the data into the report. Finally, there is an exit tab when finished. Additionally, hitting the Save tab along the bottom will both save an image of the screen and put the data into a report. If desired, repeat the process with the other view. Analysis of both apical four chamber and apical two chamber views will yield biplane results. The Smart VTI tool provides quick analysis of a patient's stroke volume and cardiac output. Smart VTI is done while live scanning and cannot be applied to a previously stored clip. Begin with the phased array transducer in a cardiac or fast exam mode and measure the LVOT diameter. The LVOT value may be entered later if desired. To measure, obtain a parasternal long axis view and press freeze. Scroll to end systole, tap measure, advanced, LVOT, diameter, and place the calipers to measure the outflow tract. 
Take care to tap the last caliper so the measurement turns white. This assures that the value is saved for the upcoming calculation. Next, obtain an apical five-chamber view of the heart and activate Smart VTI with the tab on the lower right side of the TE7 screen. The system will enter pulse wave Doppler, automatically placing the sample gate in the LVOT. Adjust the position of the gate in the reference image if needed. The system will begin auto-tracing the Doppler envelopes and calculating VTI, SV, and CO data. Press freeze to stop the Doppler acquisition and the system will analyze the data. An LVOT diameter is necessary to calculate stroke volume and cardiac output, so if it was not manually measured earlier, use the LVOT diameter tab to enter a numeric value. The Doppler envelope being used for the displayed data is the last one to the right. It is indicated with dotted lines. Scroll to a different complex if this one is suboptimal or manually adjust the trace with the Edit VTI tab using the Caliper tool. Data will change as soon as a different complex is chosen or there is a change to the tracing contour. By turning on the graph and tapping Save VTI, the system can plot multiple data points for the patient. The data from Smart VTI can be found in the Fluid Management Report type. Smart IVC is a software option that is used to automatically trace the IVC diameter changes and calculates the collapsibility index for spontaneous breathing and distensibility index for mechanical ventilation. Smart IVC can be performed on real-time images or stored clips. To calculate during real-time imaging, scan the IVC in the long axis plane and press the Smart IVC button on the lower right portion of the screen where the major modes are located. The system will automatically locate the IVC target area, track and measure the change in IVC diameter, select spontaneous breath or mechanical ventilation, which is located in the lower middle portion of the screen under the imaging tab. If the sampling position is suboptimal, press the edit line tab. This will allow for modification of position and angle of the sampling line. To initiate a graph displaying the results over time, which will appear in the upper left corner of the imaging screen, press the Trend tab. Smart IVC will automatically calculate the respiratory cycle, but can be edited by pressing the Change Respiratory Time tab, which is located to the right of the Trend tab. Smart Beeline is an AI tool which will identify the plural line and provide quantitative analysis of beelines, as well as provide lung scores. Select the desired transducer and lung exam mode. The Smart Beeline function may be performed during live scanning or from a stored clip. Tap Smart Beeline to activate the Smart Beeline feature and select desired lung map and zone. Obtain an image and select AutoCalc to start analysis. Press Freeze and Save Image to display results. The system automatically detects the rib acoustic shadow, analyzes and calculates the beeline number, distance, percentage, score, and also automatically displays the image with the largest percentage. Repeat for all lung zones. Quantitative indicators, including beeline count, distance, and beeline percentage, will be displayed in the top right corner of the image. When all lung zone images are completed, select Overview to review results for each lung zone. Smart Bladder is an automated method of providing rapid and accurate bladder volume assessment. Obtain a view of the bladder in the transverse plane and freeze the image. Select Measure, Advanced, Smart Bladder. The system will automatically detect two planes and measure the distances. Unfreeze and obtain a longitudinal view of the bladder. Select Measure. The system will automatically detect the third plane and measure the distance as well as provide bladder volume data. The TE7 screen is easily cleaned and disinfected using an approved product. 
To clean the screen without changing any imaging parameters, select the menu button in the top right corner of the imaging screen. Select Screen Lock. This will lock the screen for 10 seconds in order to clean the screen without accidentally changing any settings on the system. Please reference the provided disinfection and sterilization guide or contact an application specialist with any questions concerning system disinfection.